This is perhaps the most important tool that you can add to your game development tool belt. So in this video we are going to create a saving system to allow players to keep their progress between play sessions. So here I have the project, the final project of my upcoming course. So if you are interested in creating adventure games in Godot Engine, this is the course for you. I will add a link to the pinned comment so you can get all the files that we are going to create in this video and test this project so you can get a gist about what you are going to create in the course. This course is especially made for people that want to tell stories. So if you have a story that you can that you want to tell for your players, that you want to express a given narrative that you want players to feel, to explore a world that you want players to explore, this is the course for you. In the link that I'm going to provide, you'll be able to get all the files that we are going to create in this video and also to subscribe for the mailing list so you can get notified when I release this course. The course will be released probably on um, May 21st, yeah. But going back here, this is kind of like a modern take on Asteroid in which we have a mission, we have a quest when you go to Mars, we need your help, Ares, our guardian, would berserk, could you defeat him? Yes. And when we defeat Ares, I'm going to defeat him real quick and I'll be right back. When we defeat Ares, he will provide us with an upgrade to our bullets. And now we are uh, we can explode, we have explosive bullets. And this is one of the upgrades. When we complete the mission, when we complete the quest, we also are rewarded with another upgrade. Thank you, Traveler. As promised, I will upgrade your spaceship. Now, if you press input while recharging, you will move in the speed of light. So now, if I press Z while charging, I have this dashing skill. And most importantly, so let's try to talk with the NPC again. He will basically just say thank you for saving us, but nothing else from there. So notice uh, my energy points and that there is nothing else that I can uh, interact with this particular NPC, right? So he will always say thank you for saving us traveler and nothing else. I will close this game and I will play it again and we are going to play from where we left. So I have my points there, I have my score, I have my energy and if I try to talk with the NPC, he's going to say thank you for saving us travel. This is because I'm implementing a saving system in Godot Engine. So the importance of having a system, a saving system, is to provide players the security that they will be able to quit the game at any point so they will if they need to quit the, the game, so if they have something to do or if they just get bored of the game, they will be able to quit and when they come back, they will pick up from where they left. This is important so that players don't feel like they will have to play 18, 80 hours straight to, to complete the journey of your game. So when we are creating a game, especially adventure games, we are promising a journey for players. So for instance, Skyrim promised the journey that you are going to become the legendary dragon slayer when you complete the game. Throughout this journey, players need to trust you that you are going to allow them to go in their own pace. Providing a saving system will give this trust to players. Usually we have two major kinds of saving systems. We have the free saving so, uh, in games such as Skyrim, Fallout, so on and so forth, that players can save at any moment or we have auto saving uh, everywhere. This is when players can save and load the game at will and they won't have to deal with the weight of their decisions. And we have the second kind in which we provide specific saving points for players. So this can be a major milestone. So if players finish a chapter of the storytelling or if players kill the boss or if they reach a specific point in the map or in the world such as a for instance in Final Fantasy you can save the game when you interact with saving crystals right and this other system will propose to players that they will have to deal with the weight of their decisions because if they decide that they want to come back to the this saving point they will have to either give up of all the progress that they made ever since the previous saving point or if they want to keep the progress and deal with the fact that they didn't make a perfect run. I like the later because this 
adds tragedy to the player's journey. So tragedy is when you have an event that will build up the character. So this is part of the character progression. With tragedy, we have something that we can go back, that we can undo, and we have to basically live with it. So we have to decide to keep our journey with this in our history. So tragedy is typically what built characters ever since the Greeks, right? So the Greek heroes are all made up of tragedy. But ever since we invented time traveling device, <laughs> basically all narrative, all storytelling uh, took away tragedy from the features. But let me show you how you can create a saving system in Good Engine. So here I have this save load component. I'm going to open up the script. Fundamentally, what it does is that it's going to store some properties into a config file. And I'm going to show you what a config file is in a moment. But what you need to know is that a config file is basically a any file. So it has some sections, some categories, and below this, inside these categories, it has some properties. So we have to be really careful when you establish these categories, because if you have two properties that are on the same category, it's going to create some weird issues. So in that sense, I exported some section name in which I can provide in which section these properties should be saved. And I created an array of properties that I want to save for a specific object. Use the target, the root node as a target node here, because it's going to use a node path to get these properties and to save and load these properties in the file. So a node path, if you didn't, uh, if you don't know how this works, is basically a notation in which you can establish the path to a node using a slash, and you can use column to say that you want to access a given property. Uh, if you work with animations in Godot engine, so let's see this sleeping one. So this sleeping one says that spaceship column sleeping. This is the sleeping property of the spaceship. And it's saying it's spaceship because uh, the root node for this specific animation player is not the spaceship. So we can see that is the root node is the player, which is the root node of this scene. Let me show you how I'm saving the properties of this specific scene. I have the save load component here. And here in the inspector, we can see all the properties that I'm saving. So the health resource, the current amount of the health resource, the current amount of the energy resource, the bullet scene. So this is a packet scene that's stored in the stats property. The stat property is a resource of the default weapon node. So if you go to the default weapon, we have the stats property here, and inside the stat property, we have the bullet, which is the scene of the bullet that is going to be spawned when players fire this weapon. Next, we have the spaceship solar spark enabled. This is the property that enables or disables the player's dash that we saw in the beginning of this video. So this is how we can establish this property. So using the node path annotation, and this is going to be stored in a file provided by the save file node, which is a singleton. In Godot Engine, we have what we call autoloads, which is kind of like the Godot implementation for singletons. A singleton is a globally available instance of an object, and the, ma the major feature of this design pattern is that, one, it's globally accessible, and two, it will always point to the same instance. You can't overwrite the reference. So it's a good place to keep things, to create a mediator object that is going to be available for all other objects, especially if you're going to create some systems that depend on many component, many instances of components. Here in the save file, I have the file, that config file that we are going to use to store the player's saving data. So we have here the save file, it's going to point up to this user slash slash save dot save. When this autoload uh, starts, when it's ready, it loads the file. It can also store the file, so saving the file in the player's disk. This is the major method that I want to show you, which is this update content. It's going to call every member of the save group, and it's going to call the save data method on every component. For that, I add this save load component to that group, so the save group right here. This will make it so that when I want to update the contents of the save file, I can basically call um, save file dot update content, and every object will store their data in this save file, allowing me to save to store this file in the player's disk. So in the player's computer disk. So in this specific implementation, I uh, implemented that when players try to quit the game. So 
we are using the notification callback in which we receive a notification from the system and if this not notification is the player's request to close the window it's going to update the content of the file and store it in the player's machine so again this will, is going to be available for you in the link in the description i will also suggest you to subscribe to the mailing list so you get notified when i release the good old Adventure Essentials course. This is going to be a course where I'm going to teach you how you can tell your stories using Groot Engine. So that's it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. Keep developing and until the next time, see you there.